What's up guys, Garrett here, and today I wanna to talk about my insulation disaster. You probably saw this video right here where I insulated my shop. I needed some sort of insulation because I was going to periodically heat and cool this space. So I put up an insulation blanket and then I blew in cellulose insulation. And honestly, it worked really, really well. Everything was good. Once I got everything cleaned up, it felt great in the shop. Uh, it was a lot quieter than what it was before. It was not nearly as echoey. And I thought I had a home run here until I didn't. But it's probably not what you're thinking. The insulation blanket did not fall down. What actually happened, my shop would be what's considered a non-vented cathedral ceiling. And that basically means that there is no venting in that space where that insulation goes. And of course it's a cathedral ceiling, so that insulation goes right up against that roof. Well, I do have one inch of foam up against that roof as well, which also means that I don't have condensation. So I thought everything was gonna turn out just fine. Well, what happened, I live in Kansas and seasonal changes, obviously during the winter, it is really dry. During the spring, summer and fall, it is pretty darn humid. And we hit really, really humid days really quickly. And I mean, I'm talking, uh, it didn't get down past 90% humidity. So it's between 90 and 100% all day long. Well, what happened? That cellulose that I have is just your typical off-the-shelf cellulose. It's the green fiber brand that I got, and it's made up of uh, recycled paper, which is 85% recycled paper and 15% fire retardants. Well, the fire retardants are borate and ammonium sulfate. Now, you can get different cellulose, like you can get ones that are just treated with borate, but uh, they are a little bit more expensive. Anyway, I went with the cheaper version because I'm cheap. Once that humidity set in, and keep in mind again, this is a shop, I am not heating and cooling this all the time. So whatever the humidity is outside, ends up being what it is inside. So I was hitting, you know, 90, 95% humidity inside the shop. Well, that high humidity reacted with the ammonium sulfate fire retardant in that cellulose and released ammonia. Well, the ammonia, you know, it smells just like the cleaning product. Well, imagine an entire shop basically filled with ammonia. You couldn't breathe in here. You couldn't, your eyes were burning. It was nasty. And the more humid and warm it got, the worse it got. Once the humidity would subside, the smell would almost go away. So no, I didn't have leaks on my roof that was getting the insulation wet. This was completely and totally caused by humidity. Now, a typical house that would be heated and cooled would also have dehumidification properties going on. This is a shop. And again, I didn't have a dehumidifier going all the time. I did not have the ACs going all at the time. So the humidity levels got really, really high, causing the unfortunate ammonia smell. I tried several things. I tried running my HVAC units on the dehumidification mode, and I mean, the water was pouring out of those hoses. I also got a dehumidifier. But if I have to do that the whole time that it's spring, summer, fall, yeah, it's gonna feel great in my shop, but I'm not in here all that terribly much. And that insulation is supposed to save me money, not cost me money through electricity usage. So what did I do? I made the decision, it all came down. My kids loved it whenever we were taking all of this down. They were masked up, they had goggles on, and they thought it was the greatest thing ever. They were running and jumping and making snow angels and doing all that kind of stuff because everything that was in the ceiling was then on the ground. And it was the greatest thing ever for them. It's terrible for me because it's such a freaking mess. But uh, if you've got enough time, you get it all cleaned up, cleared out. It took me three to four days to get everything cleaned up and then you finally start to bring everything back into the shop and return to normal. Only to still have to insulate again. And here is all the cellulose insulation as it sits right now. You'll notice they are bundled up and that is actually the insulation fabric that was holding everything up in place. What I do is I, I took one section down and then I would lay that uh, insulation blanket on the ground and then drop all of the insulation from the next section down into that blanket, wrap it up, 
and basically kind of tie it in place so that I could contain all of that insulation. That was the cleanest way to do it. This was a filthy, filthy job. I thought blowing it in was nasty. This was way worse. And I mean, it was over the entire shop. So we are back to before. This is exactly how it was before. There was just no way to save this. There was no way to get it ventilated enough. Uh, there was just, there was no saving this. And that depresses the heck out of me because I thought it was a great idea. And I think in theory, it really is a great idea. It did what it was supposed to do, except for the off-gassing that it was doing. That's a byproduct of cellulose in a high humidity, non-vented space. If I would have used blown in fiberglass, we wouldn't even have this video coming out. I'm pretty darn sure it would have been exactly right. Wouldn't have had the off-gassing effects of everything and it would just be working. And honestly, that fiberglass, as I was uh, researching everything, it's the same price as the cellulose. So I wouldn't have had to spend more to do it, but uh, yeah, am I going to put that back up? No. Uh, I kind of burned myself on this whole thing. It was a lot of work to get that insulation blanket up there. And then of course you had to blow everything in. And the whole time I have to basically empty out my entire shop and I don't want all of this stuff sitting outside all of the time. Way too easy to get stuff stolen even though I live out in the sticks. So what am I gonna do? I'm sure as heck not leaving it uninsulated. I mean, it, like I said, it does have one inch of foam board up there and that's better than nothing. But I really want it to be a comfortable space. So I found a bat, fiberglass bat product that is specifically made for the high humidity environment of uh, these pole barns. Now it costs a heck of a lot more than what the cellulose or even the blown in fiberglass would be but I'm guaranteed not to have a problem. I still think that blown in fiberglass would have worked, but I don't want to experiment again. I know this other stuff is going to work and I won't have a problem with it. It's an R19 and it actually comes in a 24 inch bat instead of your typical 23 inch bat. So it'll take my 25 inch on center uh, purlins going across the roof. So what's the moral of the story here? Well, it's all about application and it's all about the environment that your structure is going to be in. If you're doing it like mine, where it is an unvented cathedral space, do not, under any circumstance, use cellulose that is treated with the ammonium sulfate. Borate, from what I understand, does not off-gas. But be even safer. Don't use any cellulose at all in there. Use the blown-in fiberglass or buy the bats that are specific for your pole barn application. Don't waste a thousand dollars and probably two weeks of your time like I did. And if you can afford it, have someone come out and spray foam it. Closed cell spray foam, one to two inches should just be fine. It's expensive. Don't forget that, it's really, really expensive. There are cheaper ways to do it. But uh, yeah, spray foam is just expensive and it's not very DIY friendly. Well, I hope this was helpful. Try to learn from my mistake. I made this mistake so that you don't have to and I'm sharing it with you guys. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.